And joining us right now is England's Lucy Payne, featherweight title challenger. Lucy, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you guys? We are, we're well. We are very well. I think you've, you've gotten a chance to catch up with uh, some of our, our hosts here, so you can tell they're in great spirits uh, for this evening. Uh, you know, not too serious. Do they take themselves? Um, but here we are. It is Friday night, July 26th. We're, we're live here in Las Vegas, and you have got a huge fight coming up here. You are going to be facing Tiffany Van Soost in just a couple of hours. So let's start off here, Lucy, by asking you, first of all, how do you feel, and are you ready for the fight tonight? Um, yeah, I'm definitely ready. I've put in all the training that I can possibly have put in. Um, I train alongside Julie Kitchen, who's world number one, so I'm definitely ready for it. Obviously, I'm a little bit nervous, a little bit excited, but if I wasn't nervous, then I'd be panicking because that's what's going to switch me on. Yeah, something would be wrong if you're about to get into a, a really tough fight here with really one of America's Muay Thai's, you know, favorite women fighters here in, in Tiffany Van Soost. If there weren't a couple of nerves going through, there probably would be something wrong, huh? <laughs> Definitely, yeah. So what, what's normal fight day like for you? Obviously, this is a little different having to sit there and do a radio show right before you get your hands wrapped and ready to go in there. But what's a normal fight day like for you? Um, I just try and chill out, really. Just try and get in the right kind of headspace. Um, obviously... I picture the fight quite a lot in my head, try and run through how I think it's going to go or how I want it to go, um, try and think really positive, but just try and chill and then wait and see what happens. All I can do is my best when I'm in there. How do you chill? Do you listen to music, watch movies? What's, what's your chill thing? <laughs> Bit of all of it, really. <laughs> Bit of all of it. I love it. No, but you and Tiffany, there was obviously a lot of hype leading up to this fight. The two of you kind of been going at it. Um, you thought maybe that she was ducking you. What uh, is the feeling like now that the fight's actually booked? Um, it's really good. Like as all of the hype that's been going on um, at the beginning of the year, that was supposed to be my fight, from what I understand. Um, instead, Alexis came over from the UK. Um, we got various emails coming back and forth, or my coach did. And one of them said that once we had got told we'd had the fight, we got another one saying that I was then too tall and they were going to pick a shorter opponent. Um, my coach has those emails and things like that, but none of that's important now because I'm here and it's, it's all happening. So, yeah, I've got no, no bad blood with Tiffany. It's just we both want to win, so we're both going to go in there and give it our all. Uh, Dave, men I'm sorry, Dave mentioned the, uh, the hype behind Tiffany here in America. Uh, what's Muay Thai, what's the, the reaction from the fans and from the people over in England? Um, obviously, everyone's wanting me to win, or <laughs> majority of people at least. Um, everyone's mega excited. Um, obviously, Tiffany's a really good fighter, and over here, she is huge, so it's, um, it's massive for me. This is the biggest show that I've been on, so it's good. Um, what's the difference between you know, American fighters and over in England? We were talking about it before the show, and you mentioned sponsorship. Explain that. Yeah, um, back in the UK, there isn't, it's not as big in sponsorship as it is over here. Um, a lot of the American fighters are really lucky to have so many people backing them and supporting them, whereas back in the UK, most of the fighters work full-time jobs and then go into the gym and train themselves and things like that. It's not quite the same. We don't have people paying for us all the time. Um, for example, I come from Penzance, right down the bottom of England, and I had to pay my own train fare, as did my coach, to get us up to London and things like that. No one was there supporting and... And things like that. I think I think maybe one person from another gym chipped in to help us, but um, no like major sponsorships or anything like that. Well, that, and how, how hard is that? Because you do have a job, you do work. Uh, first off, explain what it is that you do. I'm a beauty therapist. Okay, so you have a job. You should Phil should get your number for when he goes to England. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 she may be good, but I don't. I need a lot of help. She's <laughs> not that good. <laughs> I need a lot of help. But, uh, you know, how hard is that, having a job and fi trying to find the time to train? Um, it's really difficult. Like, I'm only part-time in the salon and then part-time in the gym. Um, but, like, you have to get up and run before work, then go to work, work a full day with clients. And people think beauty therapy is really easy. But if you've got a whole day of massage booked, that's not an easy, easy day. Um, it's not like the, the, you want to go right train after you've been rubbing bodies it, all no, day. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Most, most of the people that come in, they're, they're not beautiful already, so it's just <laughs> a lot of work. She's in there with a chainsaw and like a, a jackhammer. <laughs> <laughs> 
all of my regular clients, yeah. lovely. <laughs> now, from a lady perspective, I'm interested in something because I had read that you created a chip-proof nail polish for fighting. I've got it on right now. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> How did you come to do that? Um, it's not my own brand. It's, a, oh. it's obviously a brand in the UK, but um, I'm not sure if you guys have it over here, but it's called Shellac, and I'll always wear it now so that I don't chip my nails when I'm fighting. Excellent. It was like concrete in that or something? <laughs> <laughs> it's not, no. Adamantium. <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, I, Shellac is something I remember us putting up against vinyl siding, you know, in, in the Midwest back in the day. Well, <laughs> I, you know, Lucy, you know, question for you then. When you're overworking, you know, and you're working in a salon, do you find it kind of an interesting dichotomy that for part of your life and per, for part of your money, you beautify folks and, and make them feel a whole lot better? And then the other part of your career is, is, is busy destroying folks, making them look terrible uh, and probably feeling like they just got run over by a bus. <laughs> Um, it is a bit strange, yeah, um, when I actually tell my clients if they ask me what I do for a hobby or whatever, and I'll say this. Um, they can find it a little bit weird at first, but most of my clients are really supportive. But I think it's good to have a bit of something different, a bit of a clash that's not all not all the same all the time. Absolutely. Like contrasting styles. Yeah. I think after every fight, you should hand your opponent your business card. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, hey, I'll, I, I, I made you ugly, but I'll fix you up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That, you know what? That's actually not a bad way, you know, to kind of to kind of garner your own little, uh, you know, your own little uh, clientele. Database. Exactly. You It'll know. be like Tito Ortiz when he did the grave digging in the UFC. You walk over, you hand your business card, and you're like, I'm done. And, and you know, <laughs> if, and if you're like Tito, you're kind of like, you know, remember, this is the only thing that uh, you don't get a senior discount for. So order now Ooh. while you're young. And Throwing then you out can, the old thing you, you on can, Tito. You can get, no, I'm saying for the grave digging, man, you got to you, you buy when you're young. It, it costs you a whole lot less. Well, um, Lucy, here's one thing that we wanted to talk about because we, we talked to you briefly about this uh, before we started broadcasting. And that is, of course, uh, you know, you're fighting for this title uh, against Tiffany Van Susten. And obviously, you pose quite a height advantage uh, over Tiffany, who stands, I think Heidi said, roughly about five foot four. Uh, what do you think that will do for you in this fight, you know, as far as an advantage? Um, I don't think it's so much a height advantage. It's more of a reach advantage. Okay. So I've got, obviously, longer arms, longer legs, so I won't have to get so close to land my shots, whereas Tiffany will have to work harder to get in to land shots on me. Um, so that's my main advantage. Um, with me being taller, I know Tiffany's a fan of head kicks. <laughs> I saw that from the from the last time she fought Alexis. Um, I'm not sure she's going to be able to land head kicks on me, but I'm sure we'll find out later on. She gets a ladder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jumping head kicks. That's, that's a totally well, different promotion down the line. Now yeah. you're, you're, you talk about her getting inside, but one of the things that we noticed in her fight with Alexis is she looked to have a little bit of trouble when she was in the clinch. Did you take, you know, get anything out of that watching tape? Um, to be honest, I don't watch too much on my opponents, so I've only seen clips of Tiffany. I haven't seen a lot. I find that if I start watching too much about what my opponents are doing, I don't. I kind of lose focus in what I'm doing. So I'd rather just focus on myself. Anything that I need to know, my coach will research and let me know. So I feel pretty strong in the clinch. I just know that shorter fighters tend to try and get me around the waist a little bit and pull me in so that I can't use my knees. But hopefully if I'm quick enough, I can dig my elbows down in and, and just knee. Do you have a plan to jab away, kind of? You use the outside work to really... Um, I'll stay on the outside when I can. If it comes to when I need to close the gap, then I'm, I feel fine with doing that as well. Um, I've got really strong knees and elbows, and as Tiffany's a lot shorter than me, hopefully my knees will be kind of like to her face <laughs> rather than her body, so yeah. that's the plan. You know, you said you watch clips, but you let your coaches really break it down, watch the footage, and then give you their assessment. Uh, what was your coach's assessment of Tiffany? Where do, they, where do they say she was strongest, most dangerous? What are you looking to avoid? Where does she bring the most threats to you? Um, I've been trained a lot on the left head kicks and stuff because I know that she's obviously ex karate background, so she's got really flexible legs. Um, so my coach has drilled me on that, basically, on watching the left head kicks. I know that she's good with counters, so I can't make any mistakes, like silly mistakes. I can't leave myself open anywhere because she's a really clever fighter, so she's going to spot them straight away. So... That's the main things, really, just to stay clever and watch for those head kicks. Yeah, you were talking about, you know, being able to use your knees and your elbows. Are, are those your favorite attack? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that they're my favorite, but I think I'm strong with them. So if they work, then I'm going to be throwing them. What, whatever works is your favorite <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> You know, I, I was going to ask you, uh, Lucy, about, um, you know, you were just mentioning Tiffany and, and some of her background with, you know, leg kicks. Well, she was also a college soccer player. Obviously, we know in England, you know, soccer, football is 
pretty much the national pastime. Were you also a soccer player coming up in high school, or you know, how did that work for you growing up? Not at all. I Not am at rubbish. all. <laughs> really? I am rubbish. rubbish. <laughs> there you go. It. There you go, Governor. She gave you something that you've been wanting for. So you weren't uh, you weren't really involved in soccer then. So what? I mean, when when did you get involved with Muay Thai or karate, or, or how did you start this? You know, as as a youth. Um, I was about. 10 when I first wanted to go and learn Thai boxing or kickboxing I didn't really know the difference back then and my mum took me along to a class and then when it came to it I was too too shy to join in on my own so we left it and then when I was about 13 a couple of my school friends wanted to go down um, so we went down and after the first lesson I was like addicted I, I knew I wanted to continue it and then after about a year or two all my friends gave up didn't got bored of it um, pretty much all the boys that they fancied had left so they weren't interested anymore and um, I've got really good role models. As I said, Julie was in the gym and stuff. And I was like, well, actually, no, I, I want to be like her. I want to I wanna stick at it and make something out of it. So I just continued to get, do it, stepped up all my classes and then began to fight when Nathan said I was ready. Do you see, uh, sorry, because I think Phil's got something, but do you see the, the popularity of sports like uh, you know mixed martial arts, Muay Thai, kind of catching on more and more over on the other side of the Atlantic. I mean, I know that the UFC recently signed a, a fairly landmark deal to do some broadcasting on British television, and Bellator, I believe, has also got uh, a, a, pro, a promotional deal uh, over in, in the UK. Do you think that that is really going to help even you know the Muay Thai uh, you know, kind of gain some traction, or how's that going? Yeah, definitely. Like The sport's really, really growing. Um, Obviously, with Julie, she's kind of paved the way for a lot of more female fighters. So loads more female fighters are coming up, although at least starting to train. So it's get the sport's getting a lot, lot bigger. So it can only get better, really. Absolutely. And well, you're a, you're also a world champion in mixed martial arts as well. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just it, says, it says uh, core was, mixed martial arts. That's um, a show that I fought on. Oh. So that's what they named their title. I fought on a cage show, but. Fort Thai boxing. Gotcha. Okay. Do you plan on ever competing in, in mixed martial arts? Are you, are you, do you like it? Are you a fan of it? Or are you just, um, I love I love striking. I love kickboxing. I haven't really thought about it. I've been asked to do some MMA fights and stuff, but my focus is just on Thai boxing for now. And you, you called it earlier a hobby. Uh, is your dream, of course, to one day be able to do this full time, make your living, you know, as a professional kickboxer? Um, yeah, that would be ace not to have to work. Instead, <laughs> instead, of, instead of going, instead of doing nails all day and then and then and then training at night, you go in and you get your nails done early on and train. Yeah, exactly. That would be that, nice. That's the life, right there. Well, does it get hard? I mean, you talked about how you know sponsorship isn't the same over there, and it's it wasn't as big, and all your friends had left, and because and I loved you dropped the, the fancied all the boys they fancied. <laughs> Seated left, <laughs> but does it get hard? Does it get discouraging to you know when it's not paying the bills? Um, yeah, sometimes. But then I didn't go into the sport to make money. I went into the sport because I enjoyed it. I like training, and also like being in the gym. That's that's kind of like a second family to me. All the, all of my gym mates, all of the other fighters. So that's that's the main reason. Really, money is just an extra bonus. Excellent. Yeah, and, you know, I think that that really is – it's probably the best answer. I mean, something that, you know, a lot of football players, basketball players get trained to answer in that way. You do it for the love of it. But I think that really is the purest form of competition when you're doing it for the love of the sport and not for – the love of the money, because if you're doing it and you love it, then eventually the money will come. I mean, yeah. as long as you can stay healthy, uh, it, it definitely seems, especially right now, like we've been talking about here on the Fight Corner, uh, for the better part of the last couple of months, is that women's fighting especially is reaching such a crescendo right now and, and such a, a state of awareness amongst fans that that looks to be the next biggest burgeoning area of, of expansion and growth. So, you, you seem to be in a good area for that as well, you know, with the popularity of the UFC and the women's fighting, like you said, uh, you know, in, in, especially in the Thai boxing area. But it seems like this is a good time for what you're doing. Yeah, definitely. Like um, a lot more women are getting more exposure and like just like shows like this radio shows. I've never been on a radio show before. Oh, my God. <laughs> first time? Yeah. Oh, wow. Do we feel honored right now? Well, you know, here we should have. We should, we should reset right now. I mean, the first time Lucy Payne's been interviewed on a radio show is the MMA Fight Corner, and it, we, we'll send something, like, back to the state, uh, you know, radio. Do, do you guys have, like, BBC Radio? Is that yeah. how that works there, too? Yeah. No, so it has to go through the it has to go through the state uh, radio company, too, before you get an interview? I've just, I've That's tough. <laughs> like I mean, the, your, your disc jockey would be like, I can't call you up. I've got to do 16, 18 uh, you know, pieces of paper before we can get this on. 
Well, you can come back on our show anytime. Oh, How's thank that? Thank you. That's ace. My, my <laughs> be, be, best of luck and, and in, enjoy the rest. Of, now, is this your first time here in America to fight? First yeah. time fighting in the States. First time in the States. Wow. First time in the States. First, first time show. on the radio. <laughs> first wow. fighting in Vegas. This wow. is wow. epic. First. Epic. Yeah. Big trip. Well, you know what? I, I I don't even know. I, I feel like unworthy almost of taking these, you know, firsts away from you. It, <laughs> it feels great. You know what I mean? I hope it was, uh, it was worth it for you, too, because yeah. we've really enjoyed uh, having you on. Now, the time difference between Vegas and your port of England is how many hours? Eight hours. Eight hours. So if you were to call us on our show, we'd have to really set that up uh, quite a bit ahead of time, <laughs> wouldn't we? <laughs> we'll just get you next time you come into the States. Yes. Now, do you have Access TV back home? No. Not available. <laughs> okay. Okay. Internet, though. On the internet. Yeah. So yeah. so everyone back home can at least see a fight tonight yeah. on the net, and I'm sure a lot of people will be staying up. Yeah. It's gonna it'll be, be it's like gonna be fun. Four a.m. I think for those guys. Well, so. it, it'll be wow. worth it because you know before we came on the air, I talked about it. Uh, fight of the night in my eyes. The two of you, you, the, you both come out, you scrap, you throw caution to the wind, you go out there and you want to fight and you want to win. Yeah. A- and it's gonna be a very exciting fight. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, we have really appreciated you coming on with us, taking some time. I know that there's got to be a lot of preparation uh, that you've got to go do and get ready for uh, this evening. So. Best of luck. Uh, you Thank know, you. stay up. Do great. I can't wait to see you. As soon as we get off air, we're going to run inside uh, the joint down here at the Hard Rock and uh, catch this main card. It's going to be fantastic. Thank you for having hey, me. Thank you for coming on. Uh, that is, of course, England's Lucy Payne, who is fighting for the featherweight title tonight at Lion Fight 10.